so here I am in Malibu. On a, obviously overcast day. I'm on a hike that I haven't done in probably close to 25 years. Uh, I don't know why I was led here intuitively this morning, but um, the typical hikes that I would normally do in Malibu, I just, something told me to come here. And I'm so grateful that I did because it's so beyond peaceful. Like, so beyond peaceful. There's not many people out here and the other hikes are usually more populated. And so it just feels really good to be here. And it's something I really, 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 really needed to feel a little bit like myself again. Um, and when I say that, you know, my free-spirited, adventurous self that loves to be in nature, loves to sit and write in her journal in the peace of nature. Mm. Yeah, this, this last month has been pretty rough. Pretty rough. Before I go into that, I just want to show you what I'm looking at, the view that I'm looking at behind me. So yeah, it's been a really, really rough month. Probably the, well, you know, I've been through two surgeries in the last two and a half years, major abdominal surgeries. So, you know, I don't know. Has it been as rough as laying in a hospital? hooked up to tubes after your abdomen's just been cut open <laughs> probably not that but it doesn't matter it's you know past is the past it's where we are right now and and uh, yeah Oof. I mean for those people who know me I'm not a complainer um, my pain tolerance is pretty high you know, I, you know, I, I, I always focus on, you know, where the, where the good is, even in when, you know, it can feel pretty dark sometimes. And, you know, I've had my moments of, uh, you know, tears. Jeej and Stace have been you know, my little angels, they've seen me you know, on my knees a few times in the last month and um, just really uncomfortable in my abdomen. Um, so I had uh, my first round of this chemo on December 23rd, right before Christmas. And um, luckily, um, you know, my mom and dad were here. Dad came out from Minnesota for nine days, which was really nice. And then mom was here for over Christmas from the 24th to the 27th. And luckily I felt great for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And then on the 26th, boom. Long story short, I ended up in the ER for a few hours that night because I had incredible profound pains in my abdomen that turned out to be, thank God, but still horribly painful that made me throw up um, gas pains, trapped gas. And this particular chemo, the doxel is, can be really hard on the GI gastrointestinal system. And boy, felt like my abdomen, my whole abdomen and intestines were a war zone for, a, it's, it hasn't been, I mean, here we are, January 19th. 15th 2022 almost a full month and it's you know it's not been the same at all so you know it's hard to explain um what I feel because I feel so many sensations and you know my oncologist also felt like um you know this doxel which was the chemo um pretty potent and uh, 
feels like it caused what's called a tumor flare, which um, after an introduction to a new treatment, it can mimic like the progression of disease and the kind of things just explode. And anyway, I, 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 oh, it's been rough. <laughs> and, uh, and this particular chemo um, can be hard on the heart. And so he ordered an echocardiogram, which I've never had. I've had stress tests in the past. I mean, I worked as an exercise physiologist at Pritikin back in the 90s. I was doing stress tests for people. I was getting them myself. But an echocardiogram is a more in-depth uh, picture of the heart and what's actually happening. And uh, he wanted me to get an echocardiogram just because doxel can be hard on the heart. And uh, so I got it five days after the first treatment. And surprisingly to him and to me and to everybody, um, my heart showed that there was, at the, I was in the low normal efficiency function. Um, meaning that my heart is not Uh, as functional and as efficient as it should be, as, as we'd like it to be, which again was a shock. But, you know, so they didn't know if it was like just one treatment of the doxel because they don't, ha we don't have a baseline before it. So it could be the toxicity from the chemo before. I mean, they just don't really know, or it could be just uh, something genetic. I, you know, I've got some heart disease on my mom's side of the family, you know, so it's, who knows? But the cardiologist wanted to talk to my oncologist, Dr. Fisher, and he said if, if there's a different form of chemo that they can use, he would prefer that just to, you know, not be so hard on my heart. And so this week they're switching to a different kind of chemo called Gemzar, which I'll go in on Thursday and find out what that is all about. But, um, yeah, um, but, you know, Here's me and my journey with this all. Uh, this is a profound spiritual journey of healing and awakening. And um, I've always said that, you know, like our 40s and 50s can be the time of, you know, what we consider a midlife crisis. And I don't see it as a midlife crisis. I see it as a spiritual awakening, a midlife awakening where we, you know, things happen with our body or whatever, you know, where we wake up to the life we've been living and go is this how I want to um, continue living in the next part of my life so that's how I see this and this is you know the most profound spiritual awakening I've ever had and um, as I have posted in Facebook that um, you know we watched uh, It's a Wonderful Life on Christmas and it was the first time I had actually watched the whole movie through. I've seen parts of it and of course the ending but to watch it all the way through I found myself identifying so much with George Bailey um, Jimmy Stewart's character you know I've given so much in my life given 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 and then you know for our own whatever reasons we find ourselves in a place of wondering if what's it all for and where's my direction moving forward and, and to be honest you know few weeks before I was diagnosed in August of 2019 I had so much loss including Little Miss and my business and just various things that I was in a place where I didn't really know where my direction was where my motivation where my inspiration was what my dreams were anymore it was a tough moment and uh, you know just like in the movie Clarence the angel steps in jumps in the water so George could save him to save his own life. And uh, I feel that cancer is Clarence to me because it really awakened me, boom, instantly to holy cow. Do I really not want to be here? No, 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 I do. And all of a sudden, you know, as my therapist once said, nothing like cancer to just reaffirm that you really want to be here. And I do. So this journey has been, I mean, it's been layers upon layers of un unveiling for me a lot of stuff that I've carried in my being, a lot of stuff. And uh, this 
stuff that was literally weighing me down, anchoring me down. And it can be just how we see ourselves, the stories we tell ourselves about who we believe ourselves to be, what we've inherited, you know, roles from our family, whatever, or how we, you know, put the armor on in this life to just get through. And anyway, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But I'm so grateful for it, as painful as it is physically, emotionally, spiritually. <sighs> but yeah, I'm ready to move on from this experience. And so that's my prayer, you know, just God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Clarence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm ready to step into the Lisa Breezy that, you know, she was born to be without the layers and layers of weighted energy and stuff that I see now clearly has created disharmony and dis-ease in my body and being. And I'm listening to this most profound book that obviously has come at exactly the right time, which is how the universe works when we're ready, the teacher. What's the, the phrase? When the student is ready, the teacher appears. Well, Oh my gosh, I have to thank Jean Noel, my former writing coach for this one. She brought it up to me about a week ago. It's called Supercharged Self-Healing by R.J. Spina, who healed himself from various chronic diseases, type 1 diabetes, Hashimoto's, pancreatitis, um, I mean various things, and what was considered permanent paralysis from the chest down. And uh, this is about his, how he healed himself miraculously, quote unquote miraculously, from all of this and what he did and what he tapped into from the higher energies. And this book is just blowing me out of the water in the best way. It's every word is speaking to me, resonating with me. I see it clearly. I see it clearly. He has meditations that tapping into the, you know, higher frequencies, the energies, like Reiki and all of this. But how so much of our dis-ease is our miss, what he calls the misidentification with our mind and body and how we believe that this is just who we are and this is it. When it, that would be saying like an ice cube is the only form of water that, that, the ice cube is that's it that's all that water is when we know it has various states of liquid and vapor and so do we this physical body is like the ice cube and if we just over identify with this we're missing the other parts of ourselves which is of course totally in alignment with what i believe and but this is putting it into tangible oh god i'm loving it i can't love it even more if I tried. <laughs> so thank you, God, universe, sharing that through Jean Noel. And uh, anyway, it's speaking to me and I'm healing this body. I'm healing this body because I'm letting go of so much that I carried. And my heart, you know, what I was going to say is that because, so my heart, this physical thing that's going on with my heart, I'm like, oh, my heart is finally feeling seen. And the day after, I just felt all this sadness. And it was because I was recognizing and I just allowed the sadness that my heart, my little heart is carried as an empath and just feeling so much of everything in this life. It's just, it's a lot to carry in one's heart. My heart has carried so much sadness from not only my own, but my parents, my family, my ancestry, my, you know, the world. It's just, oh, and I just, uh, the day after, I just let myself all day long just be weepy and cry and feel the sadness and acknowledge my little heart for the amazing little organ that it is. And, and I'm like, I see you. I see you and I thank you. Ugh, oh, wow. It's just, 
I feel like this peace coming through me and my body. It's, you know, it's like when we finally feel seen, like my heart, oh, she finally sees. She can acknowledge and, you know, when we all, we all want to feel seen and when we feel seen, it's just like we light up, right? Oh. It's just, it's a journey like no other. <laughs> so it's been hard. It's been really hard this last month. I'm not going to lie. Stacy and Gigi will vouch for that. But I've also been very close with my soul, God. And I've started a morning ritual where I get up at 6 or 6.15 and do breathing exercises and some yoga and just gentle yoga and meditation just to start my day and have time with myself my soul my spirit my heart my angels my ancestors everybody my spirit guides miss so anyway the journey continues onward and upward and um Can we dare say it's perfect in its what appears to be horrible imperfections? Yep, I'm going to say it's perfect. Anyway, ready to feel free and unencumbered from all that weight, energetic weight that I have carried in this lifetime and then we all do and we don't even realize it anyway all right that's my update feeling peaceful amidst feeling challenged all right I guess being the calm in the eye of the hurricane there's always peace to be found and when we stay present there really is and stay in our higher self We'll get through one little moment at a time, as uncomfortable as it is. Okay. Love you all. Thank you so much for all of your love and support and prayers and, and however way you've helped and continue to help it with all the treatments and it just everything, the stuff that's not covered by insurance, but has nurtured my physical body through this all. I mean, it's just, I just can't thank you enough. Just, just your love. Thank you. We're all in this together. We all heal together. I firmly believe that. So, have a wonderful day. From my heart to yours. Love you. <laughs>